Everybody, welcome to another episode of uh, Sharpen the Axe on Inner Talk Radio, powered by Pitbull Audio. I am Eric Lucero. This over here is Paul. That's right. How's it going? <laughs> co-host Paul. Good. How are you, man? Pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, co-host Paul Berezetsky. How is your week? Uh, busy, but good. Yeah. We're in our new digs here. Well, that's that's right. We should point out we got a uh, still sort of under construction slash organization new uh, studio space for us to do our show out of, and it's, it's pretty nice, actually. I, I like it. I'm, I'm really looking forward to just leaving all this video gear here set up yeah. and not yeah. have to tear down and set it up every time like we had to do before. Exactly, yeah, yeah, our pretty much mobile setup that we had to mm-hmm. assemble, reassemble every single time. But, yeah, the uh, EnterTalk studios have expanded in a few different ways. There's some cool stuff coming up, uh, potentially a live room for some performances, that kind of thing, all kinds of good stuff. Oh, it's not potential. The drums are already in there. It's it's a done deal. Oh well, there well, new immediate news I, right here, right I could, now. I could run in there right now and start banging on them. <laughs> We're gonna do a improv, uh, impromptu uh, a guitar and, and drums jam. Sure. That'd be amazing. Can you play drums? I can't. I can a little bit. Oh really? Oh yeah. well, there you go. You have an advantage. Uh, let's see what we got in our arms right here today. We got all kinds of goodies from Supro. Uh, so for those who don't know. Uh, Supro is a now resurrected brand that was uh, kind of started in the 30s. If you, you can that argue that, back? yeah, wow, yeah, in the uh, 30s through Valco was the guys who manufactured them. They also mm-hmm. sold, uh, I think they're the same guys who manufactured Oahu, which is other collectible vintage, and I think some of the same guys who uh, uh, manufactured the Sears and Silvertone stuff. Did they start out with amplification first or guitar first? Uh, guitars initially. Like the, Part of the argument for them being from the 20s is that uh, uh, some of the roots line, the National Resophonic Guitar Company of the, mm. you know, those big aluminum or whatever alloy that was, big resonators from back then. I, I should know the history better, but when was like, so uh, Les Paul or Leo Fender is kind of credited with being the first first oh the electric guitar yeah uh rickenbacker actually rickenbacker. kind of takes that which I, they're kind of also related to the story of uh of uh supro slash valco and, and uh, national um I, wow i i was been reading this over the past couple of days kind of here and there when i have time between jobs um but yeah the the frying pan like was a lap steel that kind of you know had a circular body and kind of looked right. like a frying pan but it was a lap steel that had uh uh you know one of the first uh pickups on there which is those horseshoe pickups for that you still kind of see on some lap steel sort of stuff or in the uh some rather rickenbacker designs but that is pretty much the accredited as the first mm-hmm. electric guitar you know el- electric amplified string instrument i think Right, right. I, I knew it was a lap steel, but I, I didn't realize it had nothing to do with the with Fender or Les Paul. Right, yeah, yeah. Oddly enough, Rickenbacker gets to take that title. Very cool. And every now and then I see some on uh, Reverb, some still working ones. It looks like a cool little piece of history you could own. But, um, yeah, the, the so Supros... Came along, you said, in the 30s? Yeah, and they were kind of the, the budget brand mm-hmm. uh, for... Electrics, d- depending how you look at it, that uh, from National Resophonic, and later they bought out Dobro too. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they created uh, uh, amplifiers, uh, guitars, of course, that lap steels that were pretty popular. And uh, I don't recall if they had any effects back in the day. 
uh, one of the those side companies that I mentioned may have uh, may have made a, a fuzz or a tremolo here, but uh, but mostly it was the guitars and amps that became famous, especially the amps. Right. But uh, I always enjoyed seeing a, a cool Supro come by uh, or being played anytime I was out doing sound. You know, someone with a little bit of vintage taste. I, I got to jam through one at uh, at this. Uh uh, the jam we used to have, I think it's closed now, uh, Freddy's Barbecue in San Diego, where they had this that place. R really badass jams. There. All right. Uh, the, I, I hit up a few of them, like r r really like solid cats that are show showing up there and like good, good, like soul food place. Nice. Uh, and one night, this dude brought in this little Supra from, must have been the 40s or the 50s. That really? Th th sounded amazing. Oh, it was the amp, not a guitar. The amp, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those, they are awesome. Any of the old... Uh, uh, one or two tens or one or two twelve combos. Those things rip when you crank them. Yeah. I love them. Yeah, <laughs> it was beautiful. It, and even there's uh, there's still plenty of players uh, out there that are hauling those around. I mean, those things, mm -hmm. you know, with the right upkeep, like any tube amp, are built to last. Yeah. Uh, and uh, at least, well, you know, a limited supply of vintage ones is in existence, of course. So it's mm -hmm. kind of cool that they've resurrected them. And I know it was, uh, I think, in 2012 or 2013. Uh, the company that's now manufacturing these bought the Supro name from uh, a guy that was uh, pretty famous, I think, in the amp world already. I think he worked with Fender. I'm going to butcher the name. I want to say it was Dean Zinke or Zwinky, something like that. <laughs> I might have, It's something along those lines, but uh, he had the name. He was a known amp guy on his own, but mm -hmm. uh, now we get to have these, you know, the, the tremor of the 1622 RT here. It's just one example of uh, the uh, Thunderbolt, which I think is the 25 or 50 watt with a 115 was a favorite around the shop when they first came out. Mm -hmm. Or there is the, uh, the Black Magic, which is a recreation sort of of, uh, of Jimmy Page's, which right. is a, another store favorite over at Pit Bull Audio, yeah, yeah. where you guys can come in, try them out, see what you think. Now, uh, uh, the original Page's uh, that he used, is that mm -hmm. from... Like from the 40s? I don't know. Yeah. I, it might be. I think I've read before that uh, Jimmy Pages uh, was a 1968, which yeah. actually is the last year that Supro I existed. Gonna, I was going to ask. So between 68 and what, 2012, they weren't really around? Yep. Wow. So altogether, minus that gap, that's 91 years of history. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you set it over at uh, 1926 with the origins at, at National Resophonic, mm -hmm. that's pretty neat. I mean, there's, I mean, you got companies, of course, like Gibson that have been around longer, and Martin and Washburn also have you know, roots in the 1800s. But, yeah. but still, for an electric company, that's an uh, electric instrument company, that's pretty, pretty rad. Yeah, for sure. But uh, in front of us today, let's see what we got. In your arms there, they have the uh, Island series, which has, I think, three models in there. And this is the two pickup version. That's the Westbury. And uh, one of my favorite features on that guy right there is it has uh, sort of recreations of the gold foil pickups, which are uh, one of my many gear obsessions. But they look <laughs> cool. They're very pretty. Yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> they always are pretty eye catching. Uh, but. If I remember right, for the old uh, uh, the old gold foils, that it was uh, sort of like a rubberized horseshoe-shaped magnet. They were almost microphonic single coils or some something on leaning to one side or the other. But they have this 3D sound that's still sharp and snappy. Mm. And uh, these the recreations kind of strike me more as like they're a bit warmer, a little bit more compressed, like humbuckers, but. Yeah, open her up and let's are, see what you think of it. Are these single coils or are they are humbuckers? They they keep calling them recreation gold foils, but they I'm actually not sure if they are humbucker single coil. They sound like humbuckers to me a bit. the bridge yeah neck what are you thinking of them uh, I like that. I like the bridge a lot yeah 
it's uh, it's a little weird because I'm <laughs> I got that little earbuds. Oh, that's that right. Yeah, we hearing hearing through. I didn't really get to play around with it. Let me take this out for a second. Let's see what you think. I, I do like I like the bridge, and I, I yeah. and normally I gravitate to the neck right away on almost any guitar. Yeah, uh, yeah. But, but on this, I actually like the the bridge. Yeah. Still got a little little bit of throatiness to it, and a little bit of snap. I, I do like them. Yeah. Um, let's see. Wait, uh, have you, you when you've come by the shop, you haven't played any of the Supros already, have you? I have. Uh, I in fact I played this one. Uh, a little bit, and I've played. Uh, I've played through them at other stores, not not Pitbull. Uh, and this is where really I kind of got obsessed with them. Is nice. uh, I think uh, oh, is it one Saturn or something? Uh, there is the Saturn. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that one they really dug. The so I really like the way they're voiced, like the, the yes. way the, the way the clean starts starts br breaking up, and and I love the uh, the reverbs and the tremolos built into them, which I believe this one has both. Yes, uh, and the amp we have that we're actually running into here, uh, the model is the uh, 1622RT Tremoverb. And it's got uh, a single in, volume, treble, bass, reverb, and then uh, the, tre the tremolo controls are speed and depth. We haven't put up any reverb yet at all. It's just been dry and everything is at noon. Uh, here, let's check it out. Let's, uh, why don't you play me some lines and I'll start rolling up the verb. Yeah, right, yeah, and I have it not quite all the way here, but uh, about here is halfway. Let's see what that sounds like. Whoa, there we are. Is that a cable or something? We, we've, we've run into several technical issues during setup, but... Funky cable somewhere. <laughs> Maybe you'd play. I, I think yours play. was behaving better. Let's see what we got here. There we go. Oh, it's cutting out too. Maybe it's a splitter thing. Maybe. Sorry, uh, bear with us while we experience a little bit of technical difficulties here, but. There we go, it seems to be behaving now. Oh wow, I spoke too soon. <laughs> Let's turn the reverb just... off. Ay, caramba. Wow, of course, we, we uh, all this time for setup. <laughs> While the getting's good. For the little time that it manages to stay there, it sounds pretty good. Keeps going in and out. Yeah, this is getting a little, little frustrating. Let's uh, turn the verb off.
I thought it might be a problem with the verb pop, but who knows? We'll, uh, we'll try to push forward and see what happens. Right. So, let's see what the trem. That's a, okay, this is a new one on me. This this signal fading in and out. Uh, you wanna? Can you try going just di directly straight straight sure. in maybe? Let's see if that fixes this thing. We got a kind of a mess of, of wires and splitter pedals and. For a pair of uh, <laughs> pair of musicians and sound techs, we're <laughs> barely competent. Sounds good to me, though. Here. Very classic sounding. Right? Trim. Actually, uh, this, uh, the tremolo circuits in these is actually part of what made me really fall for these amps, mm -hmm. especially that Black Magic I was talking about yeah. before. Um, and now we, we only have two of the pedals with us today. We have the Boost and Fuzz with us. Uh, we were out of stock on the other two, but one of the other two is the tremolo, which you can do a straight, uh, regular uh, tremolo wave shape, or you can do harmonic on it, which is one of my favorite effects. Like on the old, uh, on the old uh, Fender Brown Face amps, mm -hmm. or I think on some of the Supros, it was a harmonic type of circuit. It's, it might be in here, maybe not quite. But uh, and the fuzz here is a lot better than I expected. Oh, you're, uh, not, you're not running through it right now. That's right. Yeah, I almost forgot. We uh, our we little try. issues maybe we here. Fu fuzz our way through the problem. Yeah, let's find out. <laughs> Before I forget, I am playing on the. Uh, the Coronado 2 vibrato, uh, which has uh, their humbuckers in it and this really neat tremolo system that is old school looking. Nice big plate on it, but. Does this pop up for string changes? Uh, yes, yeah, I think it's. You undo this right here and it comes up. I could be wrong on that, but it's a wraparound. Uh, if you can check it out in there, it's a, like a wrap-around sort mm -hmm. of deal for letting go of the tension. For In a wooden bridge, it looks like. Yeah, a wooden, a wooden uh, stop tail piece right there. Uh, both the base it sits on and, it, and the the top piece here itself. Interesting, you don't see a lot of that on the electric solid bodies. No, you don't. It's, uh, you know, you used to see them on a whole bunch of like a couple Sears and Silvertone guitars. I think some of the old Supros had them too. Maybe most of them did and I'm just uh, misremembering. And the Dan Electros today still mm. have them. But yeah, let's see if we can uh, plug in real quick and uh, hopefully this will stay stable enough for us to try the fuzz. Tangled up in blue. <laughs> yeah, we need to get a cable sponsor to send us some uh, carefully laid out, not too long, so we have to clutter them behind amps <laughs> cable lengths. Oh, yeah. Oops. Let's try the boost. Uh, Oh, 
awesome. It's cutting in and out. I got one more idea. All right. This is how shit goes down on Sharpen the Axe. We just blow <laughs> right through Oops. as mistakes happen. Maybe it's still trying to run on battery. This is, this is what shoot. happens when your axe is a little too sharp. Nothing at all, huh? Nope. Are we even still on air? I think I, so. I'd assume so. I assume so. The lights are on. Yeah, well. <laughs> Nobody's home, though. Yeah, apparently. Uh, well, this is, isn't this a fun mess? Uh, well, let's, let's see. Let's try bypassing this one first. See if, let's see if it works with just, yeah. just the fuzz. Go ahead. Unleashed. There we go, yeah. So um, now that we're back in business, this uh, Supra Fuzz here has uh, just four controls, volume, gain, bass, and treble. The uh, bass and treble are at about noon, as is the gain. So let's go to the bottom of this. Halfway down. Now let's uh, show the sweep of bass and treble. Agro pedal. Right, yeah, it's a lot more gain, a lot more fuzziness than you'd expect from Supra, but they did pretty good on this. It's usable, it's really musical. Pretty nice sustain yeah. on it, right? Yeah, good sustain, bad at all. nice crunch. Gets gets the, <laughs> the anger out. Right, yeah. Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's nice, it's loud, it's aggressive. Uh, it's got a unexpected amount of bass in there, uh, which actually makes me wonder how this would sound as a bass fuzz. Mm -hmm. I'm actually very positive this would be great for basses yeah, yeah. and baritones. Um, wow, I really wanted to try what it would sound like with the boost in front of it, but it seems we're having a little bit of issues here. Let's, let's, uh, 
You know, let's try it one more time just to try. What is this? Uh, oh, the, middle? there is expression jacks on both. Nice. I know with um, uh, with the boost, it uh, it controls the amount of the well the amount of boost. Of course, you can kind of turn with an expression pedal into an active volume pedal, which is kind of neat. Hmm. And uh, another neat feature of the boost here is that in the middle it's just flat, but you can tune it to boost uh, highs or lows uh, via the switch on the right hand side, taking it from uh, flat in the middle to bright up top or dark below. And I I think it's still misbehaving. Yes, it so, is. Yeah. Uh, you think it's this cable or this cable? Let's try. Let's change that one out. This is this isn't exciting. Ex also, <laughs> exciting this, is, this also is a uh, a proof in the pudding of getting cables that are the right length for the right job instead of a 20, 30 foot cable for a job for a fifteen footer. We have to kind of rig this up fairly. Yeah. Fairly. Let's see. Come on, baby. Yes. There we are. Go yes. ahead. So this is it in flat middle when I boost it. Clean. I'm going to try the bright boost now. So that uh, there, <laughs> always, always there for the with the volume knob tricks, always welcome. Um, I, I utilize them all the time. If the this point didn't have a nice tremolo, that's, that's oh. what you'd be. <laughs> that's manual tremolo, yep, so this is just much. automatic now, and I turn up the depth. <laughs> um, but that brightness adds a really awesome bit of chime, and uh, pushing the right amp, I mean, if we were really able to... Oh, well, there goes, here comes commercial break. We'll be back in about a um, couple minutes. A couple minutes, yeah. Uh, this has been Sharpen the Axe on Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Are you serious about your music? Are you ready to run with the big dogs? The experts at Pitbull Audio have the gear to get you into the game. From leading manufacturers like Mesa Boogie, Fender, Pioneer, and American Audio. To sound your best, you need the best. Pitbull Audio can deliver in rehearsal, on stage, and into the big time. Dropping beats, shredding guitar, or making the crowd roar. Whatever you dream, Pitbull Audio can help make it happen. We are Pitbull Audio. We want you to play it loud. PitbullAudio.com. This is Jackie Bertoni from Jackie's Groove. Come join me weekly on my journey through the music business as I take you behind the velvet rope, interviewing industry notables such as Al DiMiola, Michael McDonald, and Al Jarreau, to name but a few. Listen to their stories on being in the studios recording number one hits and onto the stages throughout the globe. Allow me to be your music historian. You can hear me live every Monday at 2 p.m. and every Wednesday at 12 noon Pacific Standard Time or 24-7 on Jackie'sGroove.com. Ready to get your groove on? Hi, I'm Tim Dolbear, the host of Sound Experience on Intertalk Radio. Each week, I talk with top professional audio engineers, producers, musicians, and the manufacturers that make the tools that we use in the studio each and every day. From capturing the perfect take to mastering your final release, and the tools and how the pros use them, we are going to dive deep into their process and learn from their experience. I look forward to you joining us each week on Sound Experience with me, your host, Tim Dolbear. 
it's Tracy Smith and Beth Venus of Girls Talk Rock right here on the Inner Talk Radio Network. Every Wednesday at 5 p.m. Pacific. Okay, Beth, they know that, but we want you to know that the Industry Pro's choice is Silver Tiger Production. STP is a full-service production agency offering sound, lighting, installations, talent buying, staffing, backline equipment, rental, and sales. Kapow! It's everything in the entertainment performance industry. It's all at... It's all that! SilverTigerProduction.com. Welcome to Sharpen the Axe. Explore the bleeding edge of guitar and bass gear. Discover a sound uniquely your own and cut through the noise. With your hosts, Eric Lucero and Paul Berzetsky. You're freaking me out, man. I know. I need to stop messing around here so much. I have a show to do. <laughs> Try to act professional, for God's sakes. What does that word mean? Professional. I don't know. Prof- I just I, I sound important when I say it. The, the first the first day that I ever had a paid stage hand job, one of the older oh, crew members oh, just uh, a stage turns what? To, uh, sta- what stage what stage stage hand stage hand job. <laughs> I should have seen that one coming. It complete <laughs> it I was I completely went over me. I try to credit myself with a good sense of humor, but I miss all the good ones like that. Sheesh. I, I just couldn't let that slide. You, you. The, the way this day is going. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we did need a little humor for sure. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, where was I going with that? Yeah, the Your first, first stage hand job. My first stage hand job. <laughs> After all was said and done, oh, this is just getting worse. <laughs> One of the older uh, crew members just turns and says, hey, you're a professional slacker now. <laughs> Well, it's all so, that. That so, whole story was lost after stage hand job. So th- this is your answer <laughs> to what professional means. This, yes. this is being professional. This this is this is more professional than anything I do in my day. If uh, if a bum cable is not going to derail the show, you can be sure I will. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, which well, I guess we should make a note of importance to our uh, to our listeners out there of of getting a good quality cable. Get yourself a little cable tester, even a cheap one, mm. to make sure that good idea it is passing. Uh, you you, you, you don't want you don't want a, a radio slash video show to be your cable tester. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's much on, more efficient ways to do this than, on, than ours. On air here, or on stage at your show, or in the studio, is not great places to run into cable issues. And it's uh, I always run into the. You know, the, uh, why do I have to spend 50, 60 bucks on a cable? Like when they look at Mogami or Klotz mm-hmm. or stuff like that and just, well, you know, I'd rather spend 50, 60 bucks once yeah. than, than keep buying $10 cables over and over and over again because yeah. of cheap, cheap conductor, cheap shielding, cheap soldering, whatever it may be. Oh, the best is picking up radio stations on your, on your guitar amp. Oh, yeah, <laughs> absolutely, yeah, you know. <laughs> Angle it. You might even be able to change a station. You know, go from. Uh, that, that's that's X only to cool if else. you're playing Pink Floyd songs and you hear some like radio bleeding in. That that'll that'll work. And it happens to be in the beginning of "Wish You Were Wish Here." You were here. Yeah. that that I've never had anything lined up. That's that's pretty. That's as rare as lining up. Um, well, not as rare, but as tough as lining up the Dark Side of the Moon and uh, uh, Wizard, Wizard of, of Oz. Oz. Yeah. Uh, wow. So I'm anyway, go, your, your yeah, first stage hand job. Yeah, my first stagehand job. At the end of that, they told me I was a professional slacker. That's where that that five minute story and tangent was ending at. And now, now we're here. Now I am a professional at a broadcasting. I don't know anymore. Let's go back to Supro. This stuff is fun. Sure, sure. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say one of the first things uh, that uh, grabbed my attention when I was checking out this guitar at the Pitbull Audio Store mm-hmm. in National City was uh, the the neck. Yeah, I like on uh, Soar does this too sometimes too, where they have the this sort of like satin finish instead. Mm-hmm. I mean, right here is gloss, and then it goes right. to sanded for feel. It's gloss, but the the gloss if it's all the way down your neck can get pretty sticky. Yeah, and your hands get sweaty and clammy. But th- this is really nice and high speed. Yeah, high speed finish, very low friction. And it's it's on the Island series at least, and uh, at least this is the Americana series one, and it's got a gloss back which. It's still nice. It's still a pretty good neck and old vintage feel, and a zero fret on this one too, which oh, I always nice. found pretty neat. But uh, 
I'm not sure if on the rest of all the Americana series uh, they have uh, all glossed out next, but I know on the islands at least uh, the ones that have come through the shop have, all have that satin finish. And just pretty chunky neck in general. Yeah, I mean it's it feels it a little less chunky than the any original Supro neck I've ever picked up, mm. but. Uh, you know, well, they, you know, back in the '30s, men were men. Now, yeah, we're true. Just a you bunch need, of pansies. <laughs> <laughs> so we need thin, fast playing necks yeah, for our dainty hands. Exactly. But hey, these do the job and they sound fantastic. Um, if we could go back, I think when we left, we were checking out the uh, the flat versus bright versus dark boost. Yeah, and it looks like that uh, the boost switch is designed so you could kind of just kick it with your foot on a pedal board. It's big and chunky. Right, yeah. it's, it's It looks like a big industrial sort of switch, and you can if you want. I mean, actually, it, it would. It, I wrestle with many toggles all the time on yeah. my board. Just, do, I don't want to bend down, so I just try to knock them. <laughs> but this is a much more sturdy industrial, like the old Chicago-built stuff. Um, so it's, it's three-way. Yes, uh, bright up top flat in the middle and uh, dark ah, on the bottom. Nice. So if we go again, uh, go with your clean, or without boost, I should say. Ah, I'll take off the tremolo. This is, uh, turn down the verb too. That's clean again, and here's bright. Let's go down to the dark. Now uh, keep that riff going, that wonderful Rolling Stones. It's, it's uh, boosting all of the above, but it is kind of nice that they do include that bright or dark in case, mm -hmm. you know, you need that utility of a Actually, treble Actually, let, let me try the bright but on the neck pickup. Sure. It is a nice sounding boost. Um, it, it, another thing is, I just love these enclosures. I was just gonna yeah. say they're they're so high. <laughs> they're like a, yeah. I'm thinking of like a like a mattress, like a like, yeah, right, like and a box spring in the mattress on top of a on top of a frame. These things are pretty tall. It's kind of nice, I guess. You don't have to buy a pedal booster for your board if if uh, you don't need to. These are high enough, but you know it's a unique look. And they're they're still narrow enough that they are a little bit of space saving rather than being some you know bigger Hammond sort space of chassis. Space saving and the you know the inputs are on in the back of it rather than the sides. Yeah, yeah. There, I, I notice on a lot of the pedal forums, a lot of people are much preferred pedal jacks on top. So yeah. at least uh, they followed suit on that. Now, uh, oh, also before I forget, uh, jumping back to this Coronado too, the uh, one thing the the original Supros were famous for was uh, like Jack White made famous the Resoglass ones, which were, I think they were some sort of resin or some, some sort of plastic, resiny material, and they have brought them back. That's what the Americana series is, except uh, instead of the whole thing, uh, both both sides being uh, uh, th this uh, this this. Uh, now it's acousta, acoustophonic or something like that, but the top is resin so that, and is the back is mahogany. Is it screwed on top of wood? Yeah, it's uh, the top is the plastic part, mm -hmm. the back is mahogany, and they just screwed the top mm -hmm. in with these. Oh, uh, from the, but coming five. in from the back. Okay. Yep. Huh. And there, and it looks like a plastic binding around. <laughs> yeah. The edge of it. <laughs> yeah, I like the uh, plastic. It's it's even sort of like rubbery, rubbery. like frictiony. Uh, 
sort of binding between the two of them. But I, I found I liked him because I, I played a number of those old uh, resophonic, or, or not resophonic, uh, resoglass uh, guitars, and I love the really weird sound that they produce. And it, you know, this is a cool medium for, for the new ones here. Uh, got it working properly, that thing sounds awesome. Try that again. <laughs> I just always love messing with that thing, but... things do provide a pretty cool sound but uh, here how about you play through and we'll see how uh, I'll leave the EQ at noon here gain up a bit we'll see how the boost here affects it starting with the flat pretty neat. I, I definitely dug uh, uh, putting in the bright into this, kind of making it pop out a bit. Uh, you ever do much gain stacking or anything like that? Sure. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And you got, what, two drives on your board, I think? Yeah, two drives. Uh, sometimes I'll... If, if I throw the amp uh, distortion or drive channel in, too, sometimes it's too much. But yeah, but yeah usually I, yeah, I, I'll... Keep one drive at a lower gain and one at a higher, and yeah, for sure. Nice, <laughs> nice, right on. Um, so wait, what? Well, you play the Mesa Boogie most of the time, so mm -hmm. you're getting most of your gain out of there. So actually, no, because most of this time I play stuff that's not that heavy. It's more kind of classic funk and soul stuff. So I, uh, I rely more on my pedals for for overdrive. Ah, okay. So, uh, sometimes I'll throw in there, but th on the the Mesa. That is, and that is your main live amp, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Uh, I think really the, the the main reason I stay away from it is uh, if I do lower gain stuff, uh, I, I play with a delay on almost all the time, but like kind of at a low setting. Ah, okay, uh, like low it, blend? Yeah, low, low blend, but then if I kick in the amp distortion on it, it just it exacerbates the delay so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it just pushes it farther than Be you because, need it to because, be. Yeah. Because, in, uh, you know, when it's... I have it after all my pedals, so it's where it's supposed to be. But if it's and I, I stick everything or I run everything in the front with no no uh, effects loop r right now. But it, so in that case, the the delay comes before the distortion on, on the amp, and it just gets gets crazy. And that's, <laughs> that's really the, becomes a little much. Yeah, and then yeah. I have to you know I could do it, but then I have to jump down and kind of start tweaking my my delay. Yeah, and you, you want to at least for for what you're doing, you want to keep your setup as. N not of truth, not, exactly. not having to jump down on it yeah, as much yeah. as possible. Exactly. I mean, I, I kind of have an issue that I've, I've, I'm trying to get better on with not, not tap dancing or paying attention to my pedals too much or just kind of shut up and play and pay attention to what's going on around you. Yeah, yeah, I need to jump into that. That's sort of I said a little more. Now, you, you had been uh, checking out these Supros, um, you know, at, at, at other stores in a pit bull. Would you consider one as an option? Oh, absolutely. I've yeah. been fiending one for, for months. Nice. Uh, the, so the, what I like about them, the, so, so my Mesa is 
fantastic on a clean channel, very, very clean, very pristine, which a lot of times is exactly what you need, and it's great to run pedals into it, but uh, sometimes I, you know, I like to have that kind of a little bit of breakup when it's kind of half clean, but you dig in a little bit and you get more. Yeah, that sweet more, spot. More, more yeah. spot. Uh, yeah. Uh, and f fenders are like that sometimes, but fenders can be a little too dirty r right off the bat. I could, I could hear that, yeah. It's, uh, it's a really fine one. line, yeah. and, and it is model to model. And, uh, like, I love a, a, a Vox that's just being pushed over, but that voice, that smokiness doesn't fit into every situation. Exactly, and that's my problem with Voxes as well. The, the voicing of them just does not always, does not always work. And my favorite thing I, about the Supros is I like the way they're voiced. To me, it seems like they're kind of in between, where you have the, the nice, clean, shimmery, uh, with a little bite to it. Yeah, yeah. It's... Um I mean, I really don't know what makes this, uh, this circuit design, this preamp design so unique, but it, it is something that's been copied and, and readjusted by other makers, but it's something so classic and so beloved. It's cool to see these back. And it's pr pretty much designed to the way they were back in whatever, 30s, as, 40s? As far as I know, the, the famous ones, uh, excuse me, uh, were probably from about the mid 60s i'd say like the the more famous ones were from the yeah early to early 60s until they closed in 68 so a little mm -hmm. less than 10 years but uh those are the highly collectible ones and i mean you still see i mean of course the ones from the 40s and 50s are collectible and you see them around every now and then uh but this is part of the 1964 reissue series and I'm sure that maybe they will re reissue some of the ones from the 50s and 40s. That'd be really cool to, mm -hmm. to, to see out there. Uh, but a lot of those brands are doing that. I mean, Magnetone is back as well, and they're monstrous. They're pretty awesome as well. But these Supros have been very popular with our customers over at Pitbull Audio, as have the pedals. What's kind of cool is the um, of the two we don't have here, there's the tremolo, and then the other one is like... Uh, super, it's the, the, the blue one. It's a Supro sort of drive preamp pedal, and it really mm. is a Supro preamp in a box. Nice. So you can... And you're a hit, Supro, <clears throat> you, could, you could push all the way. Yeah. So, I mean, you can almost, you could almost use it into another Supro, like a dual channel. Like, mm. you know, mm. you have it without the pedal as, it's, uh, as you're clean, and then get the Supro preamp, right. and, uh, you know, you have your dirty maxed out channel right there, but you can control the output volume to make it level. I mean, I, I really want to open this thing up and see how it sounds <laughs> I in know, here, I was just gonna but say. we're not able to. Yeah, Unless maybe, if I, should we try moving the mic back and seeing how that comes out? It's up to you. What do you think, sound man? Florentino on the boards. I can, I can turn down the gain. All right. Uh, but I did have a request from two. Mm -hmm. okay. She wants Stairway to Heaven. Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> 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 or, shout out to Two off. Ho. Or, or, or Freebird, one of the two. <laughs> I don't have a slide. I can't it do might Freebird. Might get us pulled off the internet. Yeah, exactly. Is this up right Let's now? see. It is oh, almost about all the way three up quarters. Up. Yeah, let's yeah. boost it up a little more. Yeah. Let's hear some uh, reverb. Nice. 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 I'm digging that. I want to see what this is like with a little bit of little turn.
there's the Jimmy Page in this. Right, yeah. <laughs> Which uh, I was able, I was actually able, this, this is kind of how, this is how cool the stuff we get at Pitbull Audio is, is that I was able to uh, uh, kind of recreate the Led Zeppelin 1 setup when we had a uh, JMI, um, oh God, uh, when we had a, a uh, Rosewood fretboard Telecaster, a JMI uh, Tone Bender MK uh, two or three around, and the Black Magic, and it was just yeah Led Zeppelin one all day long. <laughs> I have a video of that somewhere on my Instagram of me messing around with that. Or it was a it it wasn't quite exactly it was a it was a Tone Bender MK one not MK three which would be correct but still. It was a really neat setup to try out. There we go. I, I actually don't know anything from Led Zeppelin 1. <laughs> See, I, this is why I shouldn't play classics. See, see that, that? Wait, did you did you grow up playing like learning all the classics just yes. as you went along? Yeah, yeah. pretty much. See, I, I, I just got so freaking annoyed when any, <laughs> you gotta learn this song, you gotta learn that song, you wanna be a guitarist, you gotta learn this Metallica solo. My response every Shut time up, was Dad. just, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty much. Just, who's this random old metalhead? Just fuck off. I don't wanna learn all these songs to impress you. But here I, was, I am. I was actually 30. into it. I was, yeah. I, I don't know. Uh, and, 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 and it. well, see, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a good thing to know. I, I almost wish now I had. But it was just one of those things uh, when he's, for me, I hate being told what to do in general. Yeah. Yeah, I know who likes being told what to do. But uh, it was one of those things, he was, oh, you playing guitar now, kid? You should learn that. No, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> but here I am trying to remember old Led Zeppelin uh, uh, riffs that I actually, turns out I probably never knew at all, aside from little cuts and pieces. But I mean, I have a lot of stuff with me is it's just cuts and pieces where I, I I won't sit there and just learn the whole solo passage. Yeah, yeah, that's some <laughs> obsessive shit right there. But yeah, it, uh, uh, that, well, stop that humming. That was getting, that was, uh, getting a little loud. But yeah, the, uh, there's so many classic recordings that were done with Supro, both guitars and amps, but especially the amps. But, uh, they're, they're here. They're back and they're pretty damn affordable. Be it the guitars, the effects, the amps, uh, come on into Pitbull Audio, check them out, try them out for yourself, and see what you think. They are pretty impressive. What is the price point on all these guys? Uh, let's see. I, the the Coronado Two in my hands is nine ninety nine. The Westbury I want to say is eight ninety nine. Mm -hmm. And I actually don't know about the uh, the effects off the top of my head. The amps range from about nine ninety nine up to fifteen or sixteen hundred, depending on which configuration. Mm -hmm. Which is another thing that I've been loving about them is that you have one by ten setups, one by twelve. You have twins. Uh, I think you have a couple twins. You got They're the all kind one of by fifteen in the same range, right? Yeah, but you got a variety out there, and I, I love seeing good one fifteen combos like the Thunderbolt. So yeah. Plenty of cool stuff out there. And this is this is, is the fifteen watt. Uh, I do not recall off the top of my head actually. Uh, the tremolo verb. I want to say it might be 20, 25, twenty. Twenty five. I mean, twenty five. It, it might be. Uh, yeah. I. I oh, think for a gear show, I'd come in a little bit more prepared. I think you got so much gear to keep in your head, though. Yeah, it's just a it's constant rotation. All kinds of cool stuff around, though, but. I mean, they got they do got 15 waters. They got uh, 25 and 50s. They might even have a hundred water, but I don't. I think they might top out at 50. But even the the 15 and 25 waters that I played, they'll fill up a room just oh, yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah. Even if you're not mic'd, you're you're gonna be just fine hearing these out. Uh, but yeah, there's one for any configuration that you're looking for. Just no heads that I've seen yet, but.
They're yeah. all combos? Yeah, they're all combos. But uh, who knows I what's in the store in the future. Passe anyway. <laughs> yeah, who wants to lug around two pieces now? Come on, be yeah. a man. Lug, lug around your amp and cabinet in one, in one case. Uh, but, I, I like this cool blue tweed, too. Is that, is that a yeah. throwback to, to something older, or is this a new design? Yeah, the blue rhino hide here, or blue rhino Tolex hide, whatever you want to call it, is actually a throwback to the originals. Oh, very cool. At least, uh, and it's been on, I think, almost all the ones I've seen, except for the Black Magic, but yeah, it's all a throwback to the, the mid-60s ones that became oh-so-famous. But yeah, you got clarity, you got power, you got plenty of bite. The Super O amps are just awesome. Great, great, great uh, amplifiers. And these guitar reissues have been pretty awesome. I'm really, really loving the, the Coronado 2 here, as I've mentioned, I think, a thousand times already. I just wish they would do a version of this with the gold foils. And uh -huh. I would be perfectly happy. Can you swap them out? Are they similar size? Uh, looks to be, yeah. I don't You're... see why not. <laughs> I, guess, I guess I could swap them, but... Uh, uh, Super might be able to make some extra money, uh, you know, just selling yeah. the gold foil pickups on their own. Right on. But also, I still love the cool, like, aluminum bridge piece on that one over there. Thought that was pretty nice. Yeah. What, what, what's the little black thing on your... Uh, right here? Yeah, is that to pop it, pop it up to change I believe the so, it's yeah. A, oh, it's a screw probably, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. this one does. And actually, I haven't uh, gotten with our tech to see, to open this up and see how it works. Uh, Sean, our tech at Pitbull Audio, but... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make that a project this week and see what happens. But this has been another episode of uh, Sharpen the Axe. Uh, thank you guys for joining us through all the uh, all the issues we've had here on our super super uh, super episode here. Uh, we'll see you next time, Sharpen the Axe on Inner Talk Radio. Keep keep jamming, keep rocking out, keep checking out all the delicious gear out there. We'll be back to bring you more next week. See you next time, guys. You know what's all around you every waking moment of your life? Marketing. You're choking on it. I'm Scott Robertson, and when it comes to strategic PR, branding, and marketing, I've seen it all. And actually, I'm still seeing it because bad marketing never sleeps. Join me each week on May the Best Brand Win right here on InterTalk Radio and learn how to make the marketing for your brand unforgettable. Hi, this is Tim Dolbear from Eclectica Studios. I'm a full-time mixing and recording engineer. I work with Grammy winners, labels, and indie artists using state-of-the-art digital mixing and restoration tools and the very best in analog gear. Really, though, it's my ability to bring tracks to life and fulfill your vision for your music. This has made me sought after by producers and artists